Hot water storage is gonna be one of the biggest obstacles in our transition to low carbon heating. It's so easy for homeowners to fall into the trap of wanting to throw gadgets into their homes, especially if they're techies, in a bid to maximize their home efficiency and running costs, and it's easy to be misled by sales. But remember, there is no panacea, and a company's marketing budget should never be the thing that influences the decision for what's best for your specific property. So, in an effort to help people make better decisions about heating products, we're doing a short series on thermal storage technology or hot water storage for me and you and in this video we are specifically looking at Sunamp's solution. Over the last 20 years, the combination boiler, which provides hot water on demand, dominated the UK's small footprint housing stock and freed up airing cupboards of those unsightly hot water cylinders. Now, as the world transitions to low carbon technologies, storing energy is becoming important again, particularly in times of clean energy abundance or low cost. And heat is particularly difficult to store because of the amount of room it requires. The Sunamp Thermino, which is also sold under other brands, is a clever way of storing heat in a much more confined space. In fact, Sunamp say they're up to four times smaller than a standard hot water cylinder. But is it all as good as it seems? Sunamp saves space by using the same phase change principles that heat pumps and even condensing boilers use to squeeze out more efficiency. When any substance changes phase from gas to liquid to solid, it either absorbs or releases energy. Sunamp capitalizes on this using a food grade material it calls plentigrade. When this material is heated, it obviously increases in temperature as any material initially would. However, once it reaches 58 degrees Celsius, it stops increasing in temperature, yet continues absorbing heat energy. This energy is used to turn the material from a solid into a liquid. Once the material is fully melted, it then continues to increase in temperature again, if required. This means you'll store more energy at a cooler temperature until you need it. Storing heat energy at cooler temperatures means that less heat energy is lost into the surrounding area as the temperature difference drives heat exchange. This is additionally aided by vacuum insulation which keeps even more heat in. When the heat is later required for the household, for example hot water for showering, cold water is drawn through the store and heated. The store will then cool until hitting 58 degrees Celsius, and at this point stops cooling and maintains 58 degrees Celsius while the phase change process takes place. However, continues to heat the water until the plentigrade has completely solidified, and at that point, and only at that point, will begin to cool down again. And this is how the Sunamp store can be so much smaller than a traditional cylinder. It stores and releases the heat energy in phase change rather than temperature change. This means you may even be able to have your hot water store in a kitchen cupboard. It also means there's a less risk of Legionnaire's disease, although it already stores at a temperature of 58 degrees anyway, which means you already have a low risk of Legionnaire's regardless. However, if you maintain a traditional store of 58 degrees, there's almost no risk of Legionella anyway. It incorporates an immersion element should you want to heat with that, but can be heated with a boiler or heat pump. Hot water storage is gonna be one of the biggest obstacles in our transition to low carbon heating, and Sunamp is definitely a fantastic solution. I don't think it's a panacea to use in all situations though. For the advantage of space, unfortunately you will take a hit on your efficiency if heating with a heat pump or condensing boiler. When we heat a normal tank of water, we have to provide a flow temperature to the cylinder that's higher than the target store temperature in order to drive the heat exchange from one side of the coil heat exchanger to the other. We call this higher necessary flow temperature from the heat source distortion, and the higher the flow temperature is, the lower efficiency of the heat source, especially with heat pumps. Then, when you want to use the heat stored in the Sunamp, there has to be another second heat exchange, so the water coming out of the unit will be slightly cooler than the temperature of the store. This means this Sunamp solution is effectively double distorted. The store has to be hotter than the required hot water flow temperature, and the flow temperature from the heat pump or gas boiler has to be hotter than the store. Anytime a heat pump or boiler is working hotter than it needs to be, the efficiency lowers. So is saving space with the Sunamp really worth it? 
With standard cylinders, we can reduce how much hotter this heat source needs to be by doing things such as maximizing the heat exchanger surface area, making the heat exchanger non-restrictive, and also making full use of the cooler zone in the lower half of the cylinder. The Sunamp seems to have a smaller heat exchanger with slightly narrower waterways, which pushes the flow temperature higher and also doesn't stratify, which essentially means doesn't have a cooler zone to help with heat exchange efficiency, pushing distortion even further. The Sunamp additionally doesn't tell the heat pump what the store temperature is. It instead uses the same resistor switch that Mixergy uses, a link to the Mixergy video in the description. Just to be clear, the heat pump may not actually reach its full set temperature, but by having advanced controls, you can hold back your heat pump more and maintain longer at lower temperatures. So in summary, I've mentioned a few negative points here and they aren't huge, but they do add up. We have a couple of sun amps we're monitoring. And as you can see here, the flow temperatures required for heating the system up reach up to 70 degrees to heat the hot water, which isn't great for SCOP. Here it only has 236% efficiency and will probably average under 250% efficiency for the full year. For comparison, a quality cylinder with a heat pump can average over 400% efficiency, such as mine regularly does, and even gets well over 500% efficient. You can see a link to watch my heat pump and many others in the description below at heatpumpmonitor.org. And don't forget to watch our video on how to create the world's most efficient cylinder to understand all the intricacies to make hot water as efficient as possible, along with the accompanying hot water controls video. Where space is at a premium, the loss of efficiency is 100% worth it, as hot water's total energy demand averages only 2,500 kilowatt hours per year. You can also use time of use cheap tariffs, as well as solar and battery technology, so you may not care about the small efficiency loss as it's so cheap to run, and I wouldn't blame you. But the main takeaway point here is that the sun amp does not solve or help the problem of efficiency, it solves the problem of space, and we think it does a fantastic job at that. And there are a few other options available for space. If you install a much smaller standard cylinder, perhaps under half the size you would usually install for a heat pump, follow good design practice, watch out for our video on cylinder design, you can store your hot water cylinder up to 70 degrees Celsius, and you could size this even smaller by extending the heating times throughout the day. This could be a solution for your hot water and be cheaper to install and could have much higher efficiency than the sun amp or check out our mini store shell and tube heat exchanger, which can be even smaller. Space saving for hot water does have another huge downside though. The high temperatures aren't very kind to your heat pump's compressor, which prefers to keep cooler and not to be run as hard. This could lead to premature failure and compressors aren't cheap. As there's no panacea for homes, I'm really glad Sunamp are on the market and it's a great solution that helps the spread of low carbon solutions. But as usual, every home is different and requires its own solution. That's all for this one. What's your opinion on the Sunamp? Maybe my opinion's completely wrong. We'll do an update if anything is wrong and I'll see you on the next one.